In this video, I'm going to talk about the existence of imperfections in financial markets and how some of this could be explained by the presence of what is known as noise trading. The baseline model, um, a model that defends that there are no imperfections in financial markets, it's known as the efficient market hypothesis and it was uh, created by Fama, a professor at the University of Chicago and a recent Nobel laureate in economics. So what is the meaning of efficient in this context? Well, efficient means that uh, asset prices, the prices of stock or any security, reflect the fundamental value of the asset. The key here is Okay, how do we know the fundamental value of an asset? So there are three versions of the efficient market hypothesis. The weakest of them um, tells you that prices reflect all the publicly known past information that affects uh, the asset. So if you're standing at this point in time with this price for this uh, stock, all that matters to know this price is the information that was publicly known in the past. The second version says that this price also reflects um, all the present publicly known information about the company. So think about uh, stuff that's being published today in uh, Wall Street Journal, that's affecting the price now. The third version of the efficient market hypothesis, the strong one, says that prices also reflect information that is not known to the general public. That is, they reflect, they reflect private information. Things that is only known uh, in the inside of the company. Let me give you an example. Inside information could be, well, imagine that one of the managers of the company knows that the company's actually doing really badly and uh, um, he might go bankrupt um, in uh, two weeks. So he knows that in two weeks, when uh, the company goes bankrupt, the price is going to go down. So um, uh, he tells another uh, person that he knows, maybe his family, uh, maybe a friend, this information so that they can trade. Um, in, in case they have stock of the company, they would sell it and not have a loss. Or in case they don't own stock from the, uh, from the company, they could do something that is known as short selling. Um, I'm going to talk more about short selling uh, next. But... It's a way of making profits out of um, betting against a company. Basically, you're betting that the stock price is going to go down. The strongest versions of this uh, hypothesis are not really realistic because they basically state that uh, the current price of an asset is going to be equal or really close to uh, the uh, fundamental price of that company. But in real life, we see that there is a lot of volatility um, around a possible fundamental value. We hear people talking about how a stock might be uh, overpriced or it might be underpriced. So the way the Efficient market hypothesis explains how prices fluctuate around the fundamental value. Um, it's using and pretty much assuming that uh, there are rational investors that uh, are uh, risk neutral. That means that they don't really care about risk and uh, that they have unlimited funds. So they can face any kind of bet that they want. These investors have uh, perfectly 
diversified portfolios. Um, remember, they're, they're really rational, and uh, all they care about is uh, the fundamental price of the company. So they go around and they assess the fundamental value of the firm by uh, adding up the discounted cash flows that the firm is going to get uh, expected. Uh, they expect that the firm is going to get in the future, and uh, that's what the fundamental price is going to be. And then, if they see some uh, some kind of noise around that fundamental value, uh, they're going to act to correct uh, that noise and bring the price back to its fundamental value. So let's look at two cases. Take this case right here. Um, here, the price, the current price, is above the fundamental price. Uh, here, investors would think that the company is uh, overvalued. They think that uh, this price increase is not reflected by uh, uh, better fundamentals of the company, and they think that uh, this is going to have to get corrected uh, back down to its uh, uh, fundamental price. The way these rational investors do it is uh, just by selling a lot of the stock of the asset uh, at this point. So imagine that um, they can sell a lot of this asset because they have basically unlimited funds and they don't really care about risks. Well, so if they can sell a lot of this asset, they can make um, the market look like this. Think about supply and demand. If they start selling like crazy, then the supply is going to overflow the demand. If they supply a lot and uh, there's no enough demand to cover the supply, then the price is going to tend to go down in, uh, to, to, to go to equilibrium, to go to the point where uh, uh, we reach the, the fundamental value. So by selling, by creating an excess supply, they make the price uh, correct to its fundamental value. Now, think of the opposite case. The case where the price is under the uh, uh, fundamental value, and we can say that the stock is undervalued. In this case, um, the rational investors would um, start buying the stock, because they think that the price will have to go up. If there are a lot of buyers in the market, that means that uh, there is an excess demand for the stock. Like in this picture, there is an excess demand. And thus, the price will have to go up. It will have to go up to go to equilibrium, to go to the point where price is equal to its fundamental value. These price corrections that are provoked by this rational investors that basically um, buy when they think that the stock is undervalued and they sell when they think that the stock is overvalued, this is known as arbitrage. So, in my next video, I'm going to talk about a model that is uh, uh, more realistic, is closer to uh, how financial markets really work. I'm going to stop assuming that financial markets are efficient, and uh, I am going to give reasons why the price might not be corrected uh, to its fundamental values and uh, why there might be limits to this arbitrage by our um, performed by these uh, sophisticated investors that um, are perfectly rational in real life. I'm going to do this by introducing a new type of investor that is not rational um, in the same sense as the sophisticated investors are rational, and uh, I'm going to call them noise traders. People that basically trade on this fluctuations instead of looking at the real fundamental value.